Dr. John Diamond, I'm director of Peacemakers Outreach, uh, which is a Christian ministry out, out of our church. It's an educational ministry. Uh, my master's is in theology. My doctorate is in Christian education. Uh, spent eight years in the United States Air Force. Took an oath to support and defend the Constitution. Had no idea what it even meant when I took that oath. But once I got out, um, got saved at 27. Lord changed my life immediately and immensely. Went to Bible college. Um, between my master's, actually between my uh, bachelor's and my master's, I had some time off, and that's when I went down and stood, stood with Judge Roy Moore when they were kicking his Ten Commandments out. I listened to all the debate that was going on. I decided to go home and read all these documents myself. So I read the Constitution, Constitutional Convention, Federalist Papers, Anti-Federalist Papers, basically common sense, anything I could get my hands on. And then I realized... Uh oh, <laughs> how did we get from that to where we're at now? Um, and that, that began my, my whole journey, and that's what introduced me to the Constitution Party, um, cause I found that our principles lined up. Um, what I am going to be running on, and, and it'll probably be introduced in the next meeting, I've already up, given it to some of the lawyers in the group to look over first. Um, I think the most important, according, um, the most important thing that we're dealing with now is, is the suppression of our First Amendment rights, especially re freedom of religion. Um, Constitution says that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of a religion or, pro or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. All right? So when someone comes into a classroom and says, the Constitution says you can't pray in school, our response should be, no, the Constitution says you can't tell me I can't pray in school. That's what the First Amendment of the Constitution means, all right? And it's been perverted. It's been changed. I wrote a, an entire book called An Appeal to Heaven. I have it on PDF. I'll email it to anybody. I gave it to a lot of people at the last one. Um, so we've started what I call an Appeal to Heaven movement, um, which is basically a prayer movement. And this is what everybody's, as this is what everybody's been talking about is prayer. Because when you understand Romans 13, what does it say? It, say, it says, let every soul, who is every soul, Presidents, congressmen, judges, let every soul be subject to the higher authority for there is no citizens. All right. In our country, it's God, constitution, government, citizens. We need to bring government back in line. And the government is the one who is rebelling, rebelling against our constitution and rebel, rebel, rebelling against the authority that is above them. That's almighty God. When you study world history and biblical history, there is an answer. And it's called an appeal to heaven. It was first used by the, uh, by the Israelites in Egypt when their government oppressed them and enslaved them. What did they do? They appealed to heaven. They cried out to Almighty God, and he went to Moses and said, I've heard the cry of my people. Go get them. And he took them out. Our founding fathers who were in pray, uh, oppressed and enslaved by their government, what did they do? It says it right in the Declaration of Independence. We're appealing to the supreme judge of the universe for the righteousness of our intentions. What did the slaves do when the evangelists went down there and got them saved? And they all identified with the Israelites. And Moses, I mean, they named all their kids Moses because they identified with that movement. And they said, hey, we're God's people too. And if God rescued the Israelites, why can't he rescue us? And there was a great prayer movement that, that started right before the Civil War, and we know what happened there. Um, so that, that movement and that biblical principle is absolutely valid. It, it's basically if you got God, government, citizen, and government comes out from under it, the people need to stand firm, not follow the government, but we also need to call in God also. So it's like a pincer movement. If you understand warfare as a military veteran, the Germans used the pincer movement. All right, they came in and attacked from both sides. What we're doing is from the bottom up. We're trying to get government back in its place, but we can't do that unless we call in the divine being to come down. We need both of these. What we're doing here is amazing. We also need the prayer movement that everybody else has said. The book is available to anybody who wants it. I got a PDF. I can give out hard copies at the last one, uh, but I ran out of money in books. So <laughs> I'll give you a PDF. Just get with me. Thank you.